Hi, I'm Dr. Brett Carroll. I'm the Director of Lymphatic Medicine at the Boston Lymphatic Center, Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston. Today, we're going to touch on a few topics, maybe of interest to many patients with lymphedema and those that care for patients with lymphedema. And that is, what should patients be avoiding that may be exacerbating their edema? And some of the myths that may be surrounded by certain activities that they've been told to avoid or have maybe seen online to avoid. So to structure the talk just a little bit, I think it's important to make sure everyone's at the same understanding in terms of the basics of what lymphedema is and why it causes edema. The lymphatics play an integral role in sucking up some of that excess fluid that accumulates over time. Blood leaves the heart through arteries, delivers oxygen and nutrients to our leg or arm, for example. Veins carry back the majority of that blood, that fluid, about 90 to 95%. But five to 10% of the fluid is left over in the, the tissues, the soft tissues, something called the interstitium, muscles, nerves, et cetera, underneath the skin. And that fluid has to slowly work its way back up through the lymphatics. If the lymphatics are not working at a normal capacity, over time, that fluid will accumulate and cause edema or in the case when the lymphatics are not working normally, lymphedema. So really anything that exacerbates the development of edema, fluid, swelling, can exacerbate lymphedema. It may not directly impair or worsen lymphatic function from a patient's baseline, but it may worsen their symptoms because it exacerbates edema and would for anyone, but someone with lymphedema doesn't have the ability to maybe kick up their lymphatic function up a notch to help compensate for that increase in edema. So what, what things should patients with lymphedema potentially avoid? So how about medications? Well, there are a handful of medications that are well known to cause edema. And again, that can be for anybody, whether lymphedema or not, but in a patient with lymphedema, it may be more of a profound reaction. So if the medication is not essential, it may be something to avoid. Those include what are called calcium channel blockers, which are most commonly used for high blood pressure like amlodipine or nifedipine, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like ibuprofen or naproxen, gabapentin, which is often used for neuropathic pain, can cause edema, and estrogen-based therapies can also worsen edema. Now, there's a long list of other medications. Those are kind of the most frequent ones. So if you do know that after starting a particular medication that the edema worsens, it might be worth trialing off of it to see if it directly correlates. Again, it, most of these medications are not worse in lymphatic function. They're just causing edema and a patient with lymphatic dysfunction cannot compensate for it. I get asked frequently, how about flying? Can I fly? It is certainly safe to fly, but you should be prepared to fly. So in most patients, most people will swell a little bit, particularly in the lower extremities when they fly between decreased cabin pressure and more, more uh, contributory is the lack of motion and sitting in one place for a prolonged period of time. So again, most people will notice a little bit of swelling when maybe they get off the plane, depending on how long the flight is. But by the time they pick up their bags, they get home, walk around a little bit, most of the swelling has improved. For patients with lymphedema, they don't have that ability to kind of, again, pick up their lymphatic function, rev it up a notch, so it will exacerbate their baseline symptoms. Again, this is not true for every patient with lymphedema, but certainly can be for many patients. So be prepared. Get up and walk as much as possible if you have lower extremity edema. Bring your compression garments and wear them throughout the flight in the days following to help mobilize some of that extra fluid. Elevate your legs when you return um, back to home or, or wherever you're staying after the flight uh, to, again, help trying to move things along. If things are significantly worse, seeing your therapist, maybe trying a pneumatic pump if you have one to, to help get that fluid moving again. Usually flights do not worsen lymphedema. They just worsen edema in the, the symptoms from it, but do not have a long-term worsening effect on lymphatic function. The same is true for saunas or hot tubs. Often it's recommended to avoid. Certainly if you have any skin breakdown to avoid infection, you'd want to avoid a hot tub. But again, it's, it's the heat of those situations that cause dilation of the blood vessels and excess swelling for many patients, but the lymphatic patient doesn't have the ability to compensate from that and can worsen swelling. How about any manipulation of the limb, whether it be the affected arm or leg, it is generally recommended to avoid IVs or blood pressure, if it's particularly the upper extremity in that arm. There have been studies that show these don't necessarily worsen lymphatic function, but there is always the risk that something goes awry. For example, an IV is not placed perfectly and some of the fluid that is meant to go into the blood, into the vein, uh, goes out into the arm or, 
or less likely into the leg if an IVs are primarily in the arm. So if it's not necessary medically, it's best to avoid and use your other arm. If it has to be used and it's in your healthcare providers at the time feel it's best for you, then, then it's certainly not a contraindication, but maybe best to avoid. The same with blood pressure. If it's not necessary, there's, a, there's no good reason to use that arm for blood pressure, then, then, then best to use the other arm. Got to ask all the time, well, I need a, a mole removed or, or I need a, my, my hand or my foot operated on. Again, everything is risk benefit. And it may be true that a surgery will exacerbate your swelling. If you have a relatively well-controlled lymphedema, maybe talk with your therapist beforehand, make sure you're optimized as much as possible. Go ahead with that procedure and get in compression and let elevate your leg or your arm as soon as you can at the direction of, of the, the operating uh, surgeon or, or dermatologist, for example, to make sure it's they're okay from a wound healing perspective to, to be in compression garments soon after to help control that excess swelling that again would happen for, for many patients that get a procedure, but the lymphatic patient just doesn't have the ability to, to ramp up the, the function to decrease that swelling in a um, more quick time frame. Uh, exercise, generally exercise is good for lymphedema. That movement helps uh, move the fluids along, wake up the lymphatics, particularly if you're in some degree of compression. Generally, I recommend exercise for all of our patients. There may be a particular exercise that will exacerbate your swelling. Um, for example, bike riding may for one patient, for another it may be running, and it's very difficult to predict that. So if you notice after doing an activity, your swelling worsens, then best to avoid that particular activity, but doing some exercise, particularly given the known overall cardiovascular benefits of exercise, if you can find a regimen, one, it may actually help your swelling, two, at least one that does not exacerbate it. There's almost always some exercise you can do, just finding the right one for you. And then finally, avoiding infections is key. We know infections, uh, particularly something called cellulitis, will worsen lymphatic function. So not only in the short time period will it cause swelling and worsening symptoms, but it, over the long term can worsen your actual lymphatic function. So whatever can be done to avoid infections, keeping the skin clean, avoiding bug bites as much as possible, avoiding any nicks or scrapes. So if you garden frequently, wear gloves, things like that to, to really protect yourself. So those are just some general guidelines of of medications to avoid, some activities to avoid, or activities to, to, to consider doing to decrease your edema. And most of the time, it's not that it's worsening lymphatic function uh, with the exception of infections, it's that you're swelling and you just don't have the ability to compensate. So staying in good contact with your therapist, staying in good compression, often will uh, alleviate any of these exacerbations. Thanks for your time and attention.